Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Golden Goal Show, everybody. Welcome to Season 4, Episode 15 here on this lovely day. It's a light, it's cold outside, and I almost got frost by running outside yesterday. I almost did step in dog poop, but that is worth the fitness and dodge and cooperation. That doesn't make any sense, but hey, I'm no arithmetism. I don't know what that means either. Everybody, okay, sorry. Welcome to the show, Marshman on Spotify. I hope you all had a lovely day after some nice weekends of football and of watching football in the week and of just kicking a football at your brother. That can always be healthy. Everybody, let me introduce first my co-host to the show. That is for Solomon, who's a Chelsea fan and also a fan of Borussia Dortmund. How are you, mate? Doing alright, doing alright. Been a good week. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Winning it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. Happier, happier. And then also another co host of the show, Emilio, who's a fan of Manchester United and Real Madrid. How are you, mate? Uh, could could be better, could be worse. Mm. You know, it and it's also it's also cold right now. It's it's raining right now, but it's yeah, it's cold. But I didn't yeah. run in the rain. That would, mean, have been yeah, dramatic. that would have been very dramatic in the slow mo and like some background music. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yep. Talk to me after the show. We'll arrange it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm moving on swiftly. And then also another guest on the show who is an agent actually of currently the club of Atlanta. Um, What's the club in Atlanta called? I'm stupid. United? Atlanta United. United. Oh my God. Love that. Atlanta United. Uh, Dimitri, how are you, mate? Um, It's always great to have you on and because I know you do have a busy schedule with Atlanta. So how are you? Uh, oh yeah, it's been busy, but actually, I've been busy running a couple of businesses now too. Okay, it's it's me. actually actually in uh in Atlanta. I opened a club. Uh, Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the club. Uh, actually, it's a, a swappers club. A we swap jerseys there. Yeah, oh. there are a bunch of people that go there, and then they swap jerseys. That sounds so legal. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We also have trivia there and stuff. So if everyone you know <laughs> want to join on a little bit of fun swapping jersey night, you know, you know, okay. you know, then you're always welcome. You can always you know call our number and I like that. <laughs> join the tickets are really really inexpensive right now, so you can you know grab you, you. grab your friend, grab you you know your family. What about dogs, cats, others. hamsters? No, 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 no. That's gonna be illegal. No, no. We cannot you do said, that. You said bring the kids, and huh? <laughs> no, I did not. What? Okay, you know what? Let's move on. Thank you, Dimitri, for that offer. I love that Atlanta. Everybody, shout out Atlanta. And then also introducing a new guest to the show. His name is Paulinho or Paul, whatever you wanna call him, and he's a fan of Atletico Madrid Atleti. How are you, mate? How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Good. It's good to have you on. How how you feeling with Athletic this past couple of months? Uh, last few months have been pretty good, but since Barrios has gone on gone out over the last few weeks, uh, he's injured for a few more months. Uh, this last week especially has sucked. So, um, Didn't until they lose? the new midfielder, we're we're kind of we're kind of screwed. Oh well, that's okay. You can always sign. Um... Emilio on the transfer fee. All right. I'll find well, you. Uh, oh. I'm injured too. All right. Well, let us now get into our breaking news segment. And in this segment, I will ask you, because people that are new, I'll ask you um your feedback in two words. And that's all you get because we are short on time and we all have to get bedtime because Santa is coming to town. Okay. First news. So the first news actually is um, Premier League injuries. Brentford and Sheffield United has suffered the most. Manchester suffered individual injuries. So, yep, Brentford players have lost a whopping 725 days due to injuries since the season kicked off in August 11th, nearly 130 days ago, according to Premier League data. So, injuries struck in Newcastle are second in the crocked. Why is it say crocked? Who the hell says crocked? Freaking British people. Love them, though. Crocked list losing 691 days after fighting on three fronts 
having played six tough group games in the Champions League and reaching the Carabao Cup quarterfinals. Love that energy in Jurgen Cup. Then it's Sheffield United sit bottom of the Premier League table and reinstated Chris Wilder at the helm after sacking Paul Heckenbottom. Bottom, a fortnight, fortnight, a fortnight battle pass ago, but the Blades injuries have compounded matters with 667 days lost so far. Then Brighton's after that, Manchester United, Chelsea, Crystal Palace, and yeah, it's uh not really looking good. And yeah, the top actually West Ham 158 minutes days lost from injury, and then Brentford 725. Yikes, that's uh, way too much. Um, but yeah. Um, not good. I mean, it's definitely all these games that players are playing, and international breaks definitely not helping that as well too. So, um, I guess the number of players missing one or more games through injury for Manchester United, they're top of that list as well too, with twenty two this season, and the bottom is West Ham with um eight. Wow, they are feeding their players very good stuff. I must be like Chick Fil A or McDonald's, something like that. You mean um, Nando's? Nan- oh. Woof, don't make me bark. All right. <laughs> current, <laughs> current injuries and suspension. So Manchester United is 12, Newcastle 12, 11, Tottenham, then bottom West Ham. What is Tam United? God, there's Nando's. Love that. And the top leading injury type is surprise, surprise, hamstring strain, then muscular injury, then calf. Bottom one is foot and quadricep, ankle. Yes. So this I love this data so much. Oh, my God. But yeah, um, I could go on and on about all this stuff. So, yep, um, I guess I can ask first, um, Dimitri, two words about this Premier League injury crisis. I know you deal with injuries a lot in your free time at the Elena Club. Mm, it is actually the Atlanta. Atlanta, my bad, sorry. Uh, oh, oh, Altana. Altana, there you go. Thank you. So, two words. Altana. Like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your two words. I love that. That was spectacular. Okay. Now then, Emilio, two words for this. Uh, eat your Wheaties. Eat your Wheaties. Love that stuff. All right. And then, Salman, you got two words for this as well, too? I know it's hard to think about two when you just have two and only want to pick two. It, I mean, it's, I don't know. It's It's whatever. <laughs> Yeah, get a muscle sprain. Yeah, it's whatever. Get well soon, mate. All right. I mean, it happens. It's part of the game. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is true. It is true. Eat your Wheaties. Then, Paul, (laughs) you got two words for this? Uh, Crikey, mate. I mean, um, (laughs) kick a cat a day, keep the injuries away, you know? I mean, the West Ham United. (laughs) Come on, Izuma. Oh my god, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's just crazy right there. Alright, okay. on to the next news swiftly. Um, oh, Mr. KP, Kieran Trippier, exhausted Newcastle vice captain, needs arrest after punishing run of games over 18 months. So, Kieran Trippier produced the latest air in sudden drop of informed the hand Chelsea equalizer in the Colorado Cup quarterfinal win of a Newcastle on Tuesday night. So, Trippier has been near constant feature for Magpies, but it looks like he's in need of a rest. So, some talk about him, about the Magpies' best ever business. His impact arguably rivaled at the of Alan Shearer, even without the boyhood legacy. So, um, as said in an interview, um, I cannot pull up the interview, but I will be the interviewer. Eddie Howe said this. I don't know Eddie Howe's accent, but I'm pretty sure he's British, so we'll just continue with what I'm saying. He's a transformative signing, someone who has taken the group on to a totally new level, said Eddie Howe. And, yeah, he just goes on and on about talking about uh, Kevin Trippier and how cute he is and how good he is, so good job for him. But, yep, um, it's wow. he has caused some errors the past couple of games, which is sadly what's happened because he is definitely exhausted and do not play I mean, do not blame him. Uh, okay. Paul, Lino, do you got um, one or two words for Mr. Kieran Trippier here? He looks sad. He needs rest. Uh, wow, that is crazy. And then Solomon, one or two words for Mr. KP right here, who um, helped Chelsea get to the final. What a great assist. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Beautiful two words. <laughs> and then um, Emilio, one or two words for Mr. Kieran Trippier. Wow. 
That's Owen Wilson. I'll take that. And then, <laughs> uh, Dimitri, one or two words for Mr. Kieran Trippier looking like he's about to sneeze. Bless you. He's not about to sneeze. He's just so happy to see our promotion for our pies. I remind you that we are. Are you open promoting Monday only Friday. pies again? Oh my god! <laughs> As a reminder, we've been, you, you know, we're open Monday through Friday, seven to seven. Is and, this your other uh, business? Open pies? O- o- only pies? Y- yeah, it's especially like it's Christmas, everyone's favorite, you know holiday so you can buy pies for your family what's your favorite pie to give to a family oh god i'm scared of what you're gonna say american pie oh good could have been worse but i'll take that (laughs) i'll take it all right no no that's fine that's fine that's fine all right on to the next news boom okay so the next news is about oh we're not in alabama so it's not a can you elaborate uh, let's keep going. Nuno Esperante Santo appointed as new. Hey, we want to hear about the coach. branches, the Shh. franchise, okay? We'll talk about it in a second <laughs> to replace Stephen Cooper. So Nuno Esperanto Santo is Nottingham's for his new head coach, Forrest Sack Stephen Cooper, the guy who always looks like he's sleeping. On Tuesday night, after a run of just 13, uh, wait, one win in 13 matches to leave, then five points above the relegation zone. So this is Nuno's first job since being sacked by Al Etihad in November. So Cooper was sacked on Tuesday with Forrest five points above the relegation zone and one win in 13. We already said that. It was fan power that saved Cooper from the sack last season, even though he kept Forrest up. But the owner, Evelyn Maringas, the Greek businessman, lost patience after an, another underwhelming start of the campaign. So asked if he had been set any targets by the owners, the new Forrest head coach, Nuno said, uh, we didn't. Oh, sorry, he's Portuguese. Uh, we did. Oh, this is gonna be tragic. We didn't mark ourselves. Uh, that's Russian. Um, uh, we didn't mark ourselves. That's Italian. Uh, let me just get a voice changer for this, and I'll and I'll just say that this is um. Uh, I'll be Joe. All right. We didn't want to sell the big exhibition on the day to day process. Uh, she told me what Stephen Cooper did. He was huge. Uh, getting Forrest back in the Premier League was huge. Uh, we are trying to improve that legacy. That was my beautiful Portuguese accent. Thank you very much. All right. Um. So, Salman, one or two words for Nuno. Um. Yes. Taking over Forrest. <clears throat> I think he's good at Wolves. Yeah. Let's see. Let's let's hope that he does as good as of a job in Forest that he does he did at Wolves. So. Hmm, okay. Nice. And then uh, Dimitri, one or two words for Mister Nuno. He does like eating pies. I heard. <clears throat> <clears throat> there has never been a better. He he looks and and, and you know he, he, he looks thinks hungry. in his mind. There's never been a better day to have a pie after a bad day. It is true. If I was sad, I'd want a pie. And where can I get those pies? Hello. Well, I can, I can, like, I, I, I can ship some to you if you want, or I can, you know, schedule a delivery. We have uh, special delivery services for some of our pies. Oh. It just depends what you order and you know what you put onto that. But you can, you know, even choose the delivery person and stuff. I think oh. that's important in the pie business. Oh, nice. Love that. Very good. Okay. Emilio, one or two words for Mr. Nuno over here, the new Nottingham Forest coach. Good luck. I like that. Very deep voice. Very good. Then, Paulinho, one or two words for Mr. Nuno right here. Looking very sad. Um, I don't know why he's excited to be there. Okay, same. Yeah, look at that joy in his face. Yeah, he looks so looks, excited. He looks way more excited than Steve Cooper. Oh, that's true. Steve Cooper looked like he wanted to cry every <laughs> All right, on to the next news, which is indeed the next news. Wow, crazy. Look at that. So, Troy Dini, if you don't remember Mr. Dini, oh, I can just say Hulk Dini. Yeah, that's how it is. But, um, yeah, Troy Dini named... Permanent Forest Green Rovers head coach after David Horseman exited. 
Horseman. Horseman. David Horseman, Horseman was appointed in July following Forest Green's relegation to League One. Troy Deeney, 35 years old, joins the club in August as a player coach. If you don't know what a player coach is, a coach that is allowed to play as a player. Crazy. And now takes on his first management role. Forest Green are second bottom in the League Two with two wins in the last 14 games. Yikes. But Forest Green are second. Yeah, I just said that. I love that. Thank you very much. Horseman was appointed in July following the... I said that. Okay, so Dini, 35, holds UEFA a coaching license and joined Force Greens in August as a player coach, making 16 appearances in League Two and scoring four goals, who is the top goal scorers of his the club he's coaching. Love that. I am very pleased to and honored to be appointed as a new head coach, uh, Dini said. I know that the fans will have many questions which will be answered as soon as possible. We will not hide from the task at hand and will be open to honest along the way. So one thing I can assure you is everyone will work our very hardest to bring wonderful club back to success. This is an exciting new role with many challenges and I've embraced, I'm trying to do his voice because I've heard him in podcasts that embrace a lot of work for us to do, which already has started off. I look forward to welcoming the fans at home at the Friday against Gillingham. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Dini, Dini. You know, everybody knows Dini, but yeah, um, yeah. I guess I can ask Paulinho, one or two words for Mr. Troy Dini coaching the Green Force Green Robbers. Oh, he's he's just trying to be Drogba and Rooney. Yes, agreed. Hopefully, even better. Except, except League Two version. Mm, that's a good word that I definitely know what it means. Emilio, one or two words for Mr. Troy Dini. I. Uh... Dini, I don't know. All right, love that from you. Okay, well, yeah, moving on from that. And oh yeah, Dimitri, what do you think about Troy Dini? He has a key lime pie type shirt. Ah uh, no no no, he is not affiliated with our business anymore. After the last time, um, yeah, it didn't go that well. What did he? And no no no, we're not allowed to disclose that. So we just okay. not allowed anymore. No. Okay, understandable. And it's considerably hard to get banned from our business. I you think you have to be... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Love that. Okay, swiftly moving on to the next news uh, button is... Alright, so next news is indeed... Uh-oh! Um, permanently confirms that Flormouth versus Luke will be replayed in full after Tom, Nokia, cardiac arrest. Yeah, so... Um, Actually, this was kind of serious, so... Tom Lockyer collapsed in the 58th minute of Luton's match against Bournemouth last weekend. Luton captain was taken to the hospital. The game was later called off with the score level at 1-1. One to -one. Date for replay is yet to be decided, so... If no one know, um, Lockyer collapsed in the 58th minute on Saturday's match, and he suffered a cardiac arrest, which subsequently resulted in the game being abandoned. The rescheduled game will happen later this season, so the Premier League... Statement added, the decision to abandon the match in the 59 minutes was made collectively between the match officials, players, and managers for both clubs and the Premier League. So the league would like to thank the medical staff and those involved for the swift actions in responding to what was an extremely upsetting situation for everybody. We wish Tom a continued recovery and our thoughts are with him and his family and all those at Luton Town FC. So... That's what Luton Town said on their socials on Sunday. And Lokia continuously remains in the hospital undergoing tests and scans, but added that they would not provide a running commentary on the health of the defender. So, yep, if you didn't know, that's what did happen. Uh, stoppages around the 25th minute, 25th minute of the game. Lokia went down with a cardiac arrest, and luckily he was fine. I mean, fine after a couple, you know, more than a couple, like 10 minutes of him. This happened uh, with Christian Eriksen and also actually happened with Tom Lockyer, the same player that we're just talking about right now in the past uh, year. So this is the second time it's happened. So tough, but glad to hear that he's alive and doing well. So, yep. Um, I guess, Solomon, you got one or two words for Mr. Tom Lockyer and what happened against Bournemouth. I know it's a tough subject to... I mean, uh, this sort of things just keep happening. I don't know. It seems very odd. A professional player. It's like, but 
luckily he's good. Yeah, I agree as well too. Uh, Emilio, you got one or two words for Mr. Tom Blockier. Uh, get better. I hope he gets better soon. Yeah, I agree. And then uh, Paul Inyo, you got one or two words for Tom. Uh, prayers up, man. That's all. Okay. Yeah. And then Dimitri, um, you got one or two words for Tom. Maybe send him a couple pies or something. Yeah, we will. Okay, that's nice of you. All right. Well, on to uh more lighter news and we can just get into that right now so next news is about Jurgen complaining club sorry I did this Jurgen club unhappy with Anfield atmosphere during the Camaro Cup win of a West Ham so after Gary Neville described Anfield atmospheres as worst he's ever experienced for a Liverpool versus Manchester United match Bob calls for more support from fans ahead of early game with Arsenal if you are not I'm gonna do a German accent <laughs> Trying to do his lap. <laughs> if you are not in right shape, forgive your ticket to somebody else. <laughs> Actually, I can hear him talk. Let's just hear him talk for a while. Oh, I don't want to hear a stupid little ad about a mobile game. But, yep, um, this was Jurgen Club criticized Liverpool for that, saying he's not overly happy with them, but we're going to hear him from him right now. I said, I thought in the first half a little bit when, when the boys played really exceptional, I was not overly happy. I have to say it now with the, with, with the atmosphere behind me I don't know I don't I ask people what do we want so we change a lot of things we dominate West Ham like crazy we miss chances and I, I if I would be in a stand I would be on my toes but 1000 percent and I don't know if the Man United game was that bad that we have to say oh sorry that we can that we didn't smash them yeah. um, <laughs> we need Enfield on Saturday <laughs> Without Anfield, I would say after the, they didn't play this week, just to make sure I know. Sorry, they didn't play. They prepare for this game, and who knows a little bit about them? They will be prepared. So we need Anfield on their toes from the first second. Without me get having an argument with the opposition coach, whatever, we need you from the first second. So if you really want, if it's too much football in December, I don't know. Sorry, we have to play it as well. But if you are not in the right shape, give your ticket to somebody else. Damn, that's crazy. Anfield is like one of the biggest like footballing stadiums in the world known for its atmosphere and yikes, them having to have their own statement out saying that sorry for not having a good atmosphere, that's crazy. That is insane. Okay. Um Emilio, you got one or two words for Mr. Jurgen complaining Kolb. Uh, try harder. Yep, got it. And then Dimitri, you got one or two words for Mr. Jurgen Morning Kolb. Over here. When we were neighbors oh. back in the day. Yeah. Back in Germany. Um, no. Well, yeah, kind of. It depends what Germany you describe as Germany and what Germany you describe as not so much Germany, but we're in Germany, Germany. And um, yeah. No, I have nothing to say. Good for him. Good for him. Uh, very nice. All right. Solomon, you got one or two words for Mr. Jorgen Klopp. I know you love hearing him talk. <laughs> yeah, no, not so much. <laughs> not after what he said about Chelsea, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He complains a lot. I don't yeah, know, as the top bit. managers, they complain a lot. Mm -hmm. Love that. All right. And then, Paulinho, you got one or two words for Mr. Jorgen Klopp right here. He looks very happy right now. Uh, Scheiße. Ah, ah, yeah. Oh, good. The the fans played down to the level that the players played at. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> on to the next news, which is nothing. We have nothing news, so we are going to go on to talk about our lovely times, which is indeed... Oh, God. No, wrong button. Wrong button. That's creepy. Ow! Michael Jackson. All right, we're going to go on to this music. And I'm going to watch... I want Paul to sing first. Paul, go ahead and sing. <laughs> what am I singing? Nothing. I, I'm kidding. I just wanted to hear something funny. What an amazing I was going to do it. I love the commitment. <laughs> I know. I know. Damn it. I should have went along. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Premier League, let's get into it right now. So first place <laughs> is Arsenal. Second place is Liverpool. Third place is Austin Vey. Fourth place is Manchester City. Fifth place is Tottenham. 18th place is Luton Town, 19th place is Burnley, and 20th place is Sheffield United going down. Actually, 17. Let's get into it. 
First game of the weekend, Nottingham Forest and Tottenham did listen to this game. 2-0 for Tottenham and a red card for Tottenham because they are naughty naughty. Second game, Bournemouth Luton Town, which is indeed postponed after 1-1. One one, following Tom, look, he has cardiac arrest, so get well soon, mate. And that will be played another time. Then, third game, Chelsea and Sheffield United. 2-0 for Chelsea, finally, <sighs> finally winning a game for once. Then another game, Manchester United, Crystal Palace, a beauty. Oh my god, beauty of a game in a big up palace for coming back and winning a penalty in the last minutes of the game. So two all there. Newcastle United and Fulham, 3-0 for Newcastle United. Easy win for them and a red card for Fulham. Being naughty naughty, Raul Jimenez is trying to jump over someone for some reason. Burnley and Everton, nil to two for Everton. And yes, good job for Everton, continuing their massive form. West Ham United and Wolves, 3 to nil for West Ham United. The Irons ironing out the Wolves. Oh, that was weird. Brentford United, Austin Villa, 2 to 1 for Austin Villa. Red cards for both teams, but yes, Austin Villa still keeping up the top four places. Arsenal, Brighton, 2 to nil for Arsenal, continuing to win more games. And yes, Brighton still sinking down towards the table after their great season last season. Then Liverpool, Manchester United. Yikes, I watched this game. Ugh. All I gotta say is, ugh. but 0-0, zero to 0-0, zero, nil to nil, and a red card for Manchester United being naughty. All right, um, I guess I can um, let, I can talk, let, okay. Um, I can, uh, Salman, <laughs> you wanna talk about the Chelsea game? <clears throat> uh, I mean, yeah, this was, um, this is, I mean, <sighs> Oh my god, this would be so low for us to praise Chelsea for winning against like Sheffield United, but I mean they are very at the top at the I mean at the very bottom of the table. Um and uh Chelsea they are struggling, but it's a home win and uh it's kinda like a a little bit of a I guess a push to go. Even yeah. then, it was a good uh two goals. Uh, one by, I think Palmer, and then uh, another one by uh, Jackson. Michael but Jackson. it's just it was, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Ow! There you go. <laughs> you yeah, some. but I think yeah, I think we would ex- in a normal days we would be expected to win the sort of games, and uh, they were. Uh, I can't lie, they were dominant, and you would expect them to be as well. I mean, I'm not saying anything bad about Sheffield, but uh, they're just they're struggling not at the uh, at the moment, and uh, they're having a change of management and coach, a new coach, uh, and uh, Chelsea. They've been trying to figure things out, but uh, overall, it was it was okay. Um, I think if you look at the statistics, uh, overall, it it wasn't that impressive, but at the same time, it's a win. It's a win, you know. It's a win. win. Is a win. Very yeah, a win is a win. Like uh, they had fifteen shots on on target. Six. I mean, uh, fifteen shots, six on target, versus one six to one. Ooh, that's pretty. Someone's they looking had, at like, stats. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So it's pretty. It's very wide margin, but at the same time, you would expect them to win those mm-hmm. sort of games. And um, I, I don't know the the starting lineup. It's. I think it makes a it makes a difference whenever there's um, Thiago starts most of the time. I feel like yep. they play well when he does, even though sometimes he does make uh, costly a little bit. You know, you can understand, but sometimes he does. And Body Shield has been in a great form as well. And then the attacking, I don't know. It's just they've been experimenting with a lot of stuff with this squad. And then the only consistent part that I've been is in the middle which is uh casado he's been playing consistently even though he's he hasn't really performed where we're like wow such an amazing performance but and then yeah it's just here and there like uh, he's rotating i know he usually plays um palmer on the left Mm -hmm. and uh but this time he went around the other way uh sterling was playing and he was playing in the middle as if like uh I guess, yeah. So it falls nine, and then Jackson was playing that ten 
role, and he did okay as well. I mean, they did both uh, score uh, in the game, but overall, it was okay. It was okay. It wasn't exciting. Like, I wasn't looking forward to it. Yeah. But it was good. It was a good game. Good motivation. We won finally at home. Yep. Agreed. So, yep. 2 0 for Chelsea versus Sheffield. Cole Palmer scoring the 54th minute. Nicholas Jackson scoring the 61st minute. So, yep. Pushing up for Chelsea. Great job for them. And uh, we can quickly talk about the game that happened. First game, actually, of it. So, that was indeed Nottingham Forest and Tottenham. Yep. Calm win for Tottenham. So, Richarlison scoring in the 47th minute, doing his pigeon celebration like a twat he is. Then Dijon <laughs> Chesky scoring the 65th minute. And, yep. Yeah, good job for the Swede. He is actually doing one of the do his stats in the Premier League is he has ran the most out of anybody in the Premier League is so far this season so that's crazy stat then uh, Busuma getting a red card in the 70th minute yep uh, stats kind of equal but yeah more stats for Tottenham with the possession wise but shooting 15 to 12 and yeah kind of <coughs> equal game yeah then I guess we can move on to Man City Crystal Palace I did watch this match as well too with the Chelsea one alongside but um, I'll just say the stats for this one. So, Man City scoring with Jack Lewis in the 24th minute. Then, Rico Lewis, the young uh, English uh, left winger, I believe. Left left center, uh, left wing back, I think he is. But then, scoring the 54th minute. Then, Jean-Philippe Mateta, that huge French man, scoring the 76th minute. Then, Mikel Olise scoring in the 95th minute, a penalty to, act, to equalize it. And Manchester, not at the Selhurst Park in Crystal Palace in London, but no, and Manchester. But yeah, these stats are definitely in favor of Manchester. So 19 to 5, 9 to 2, and 75 to 25. So shots in possession. Yikes. A lot of, a lot more for City. But yep, Crystal Palace did <laughs> uh, take that tie, and they'll take that any day of the week. And after that final penalty, Pep had his like hands in his, in his face and. <laughs> the coach for Crystal Palace, Roy Hudson, just like looked at Pep and started laughing. <laughs> it was so funny, but yep, that's what happened with uh, Palace and City. And then we can go on, say, for Newcastle Fulham. Um, Newcastle, yeah, 3 to 0. Lewis Miley, the young 17 year old, scoring the 57th minute. Then Miguel Armion scoring the 61st, 4th minute. Then Dan Burns scoring the 82nd minute. And yeah. Then uh, Raul Jimenez getting a red card in the 27th minute, wanting to do a dive at someone's head, because why not? Then we can talk about, um, I guess, Arsenal-Brighton quickly. 2 to nil for Arsenal versus Brighton. Gabriel Jesus scoring in the 53rd minute. Kai Havertz scoring in the 87th minute. Great goal for Havertz as well, too. Yeah, it was crazy possession and shots wise. 26-6 to six shots for Arsenal. 48-52 to 52 as well, too, for... Um, yeah, Arsenal, so yeah, easy win for Arsenal, I have to say so myself. Then I guess we can talk about last game of the weekend, Liverpool, Manchester United. Emilio, let me hear what you got to say. What you say about Jason Rulo? No, nah, let me let me tell you, when I said this was a game, this was a game. Each, each side had 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 every chance to to try to to try to score score at least one goal, but just not just nada, nothing. What what are the what are the games we're on that that can have a a good a good match and can lead to a zero a zero zero where no one has scored? Um, SpongeBob SquarePants. I ex- exactly, bro. So, and on and surprisingly, Onana was doing was doing very decent. He didn't concede any goals thus far, which shocks me. Yeah. Mr. Slippery Gloves himself. But I don't. But I didn't understand what that. Why Dallas got a red card though. Mm. Did you watch the game? I did. Yeah, he cussed at the ref one time, then cussed at the ref another time. So. Yep. That's uh, what happens. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes more sense. Dude, Portuguese people have too much big of a mouse. That's what happens. Look. Yeah. At the I want. I wonder who they who they got that from. Mm. Cristiano Ronaldo, Sui. All right, <laughs> now we can get into La Liga, and boom, like that. First no, place. Go back, go back. Oh God, yes, Paul. Do you want to say anything about the Prem? 
Yeah, yeah. You know, and Cuckoo's back, and we got uh, a few Chelsea boys on here. So, what you guys got to say about that? He's the love of my life. Favorite player. He's my goat currently. He's going to no, tear up the league. Huh? I think he's going to tear up the league. Hopefully, and not tear up his hamstring like everybody else's. So. Huh? That next, yeah. Yep, yep. Thank God for Chicago for freaking ruining his knee. Love that. Thank you, Chicago, for having the worst fields in the world. Yeah. Oh, that was actually... Sh- Oh, that was at Soldier Field. Yeah, Solomon and I went to go see Borussia Dortmund <laughs> versus Chicago, and yes, and Cuckoo was running and slipped versus on Chelsea. a. Yep, we know. And so, and... Andrew, you could have done something about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Big man, Andrew, what you you could have? What? Come on, dude. I was like, oh no, I got to ruin Chelsea's transfer. This happens, by the way, every year. Mm-hmm. We get we get a new player, or we got a promising player. This happened last year um, with uh, Ruben. They yep. came and they played the revolution and um, he got injured and he was out for like a long time. And this was like, he was like, he had a good, what was it? He had a good like um, World Cup and he was performing. He was like promising, you know, like he's like 20, 21 or something. And he comes back and he gets injured. This year, it's the same thing. And Cuckoo was like, oh, he was the talk of like, you know, the Prem is going to be like, and then he gets injured. But I mean, I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a, um, I don't know. Chelsea have this thing where they actually keep bringing players, where they're not even ready, like they're not fully recovered. They do this to everyone. Like Conte mm-hmm. has never recovered fully, they, but they just keep bringing him. Like it's an important game, blah blah. They just bring him and they get us injured, and he doesn't play for another two months. And then they do the same thing whenever a big game comes up. So hopefully it doesn't happen with um and Reese James, obviously. He comes in without fully recovering. So there's a pattern over here, but hopefully that's not the case with Nkuku and uh, Lavia. And then maybe hopefully they will go. They play good games and we have a good December. Hopefully, yeah, man. Barcelona hopefully. syndrome, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, Chelsea... I guess we can talk about the Carbaro Energy Drink, Red Bull, Monster, Bang Energy, um, Prime Energy Cup. So, yeah, mm-hmm. Chelsea did beat Newcastle. Liverpool did pump West Ham United. Um, Middlesbrough did win against another team. And who else is left right now? Um, Fulham did beat... Uh... I know Fulham's through as well. I think they'd be Everton. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah Chelsea's playing Mid- Middlesbrough. Then Liverpool is playing Fulham for the semifinals. And those are two rounds. So yeah, I'm excited to see him Kuku back in the team. So all right, mm. Alega, let us get into it. So first place is Girona. Second place is Real Madrid. Third place is Barcelona. Fourth place is Atletico Madrid. And 18th place is Santa Vigo. 19th place is Granada. Winner place is Armea and Match Day 18. Let's get into it. And yes, Paulinho, if I butcher these names, you can always help me. Why not? So, first okay. one Real Villacano versus Valencia. They also won for Valencia. And a red card for Valencia because they're naughty, naughty. Then oh. Granada and Sevilla. They also three for Sevilla. And yeah, great win for Sevilla, actually. Then Atletico Madrid and Getaf. Three to three, three all there. Atletico Madrid with a red card as well too. Grizzy, of course, Antoine Griezmann getting himself in the history books for Atletico Madrid and getting himself a goal. So we'll talk about that in a second. Then Barcelona and Armea, three to two. Um, huh? Almeria. Almeria. Oh, thank you. Almeria. Is it Almeria or Almeria? Almeria. Mamma Mia. So three to two for Barcelona beating Mamma Mia. And yeah, great job for Barcelona winning that. And they're heading to Dallas right now on the plane. Good job for them. Stupid schedule. Athletic Club and Las Palmas. 1-0 for Athletic Club beating Las Palmas. Then Villarreal and Celta Vigo. 3-2 for Villarreal. If you want to go watch the highlights for this game, it was a great game to watch. And then more teams are playing tomorrow. So Real Betel and Girona. Cadiz and Real Sociedad. Alaves and Real Madrid, and Mallorca, and Ashashuna. And yeah, they play tomorrow. All right, so I guess we can talk... Oh, uh, blah, blah. 
That was a great noise. Um, Paul, Lino, you want to talk about Atletico Madrid and Getafe? Yeah, so beginning it looked like uh, Getafe actually were playing really well. Atletico had a pretty good spell and then Savage got sent off and Atletico Madrid just started going back to their classic counter-attacking and pretty much got carried by Raquel May and Griezmann. Hmm. Fair. Wait, what was the stat? stat what was the uh, stat with uh, with Griezmann for Athletic Madrid? Is he the highest goal scorer now for? Uh, he's joint highest now with uh, Luis Aragones, 173. Ooh. Okay, wow, that's insane. Yeah, that's why he he was talking about it before in the preseason about how he wants to. One of the reasons he came back was to break the goal record, and he's about to do it. He will do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep, so uh, stats for the game. It was Antoine Griezmann touring in the 44th minute. Then uh, Borja by... Uh, ooh, I like this name. Borja Mayoral going yep. 53rd Borja minute. Mayora. Borja Mayoral. Borja oh, Thank you. And then uh, Antoine Griezmann scoring another... Actually, Alvo Morata scoring. Look at him not missing a goal for Chelsea in the 63rd minute. Then Antoine Griezmann scoring a 69th minute penalty. Classy guy himself. Then, uh, oh, of course, I have to talk about Stefan Savic getting a red card in the 38th minute because, hey, times get tough. You want to get mean? You want to get rowdy? Why not? Then Oscar Rodriguez going to the 87th minute for Getafe. Then uh, Borja Mayoral going in the 93rd minute at penalty for Getafe. Still, crazy game. Crazy game. Was there a fight at the end of the game? Is that why I see this tunnel? Uh, No, there wasn't. Okay. It's just me. All right. Um, anything else you want to say about Atleti? Uh, no. Okay, N- not this week. Okay. All right. Fair enough. And then um, Barcelona and Amelia. Amelia. Santa Maria. Mamma Mia. So then uh, Rafinha scoring in the 33rd minute. Then... Leo Baptisto scoring the 41st minute. Then Sergio Roberto scoring the 60th minute. Then Edgar Gonzalez scoring the 71st minute. Then again, Sergio Roberto scoring the 83rd minute for Barcelona, making it 3-2. to two. So, yeah, big possession, big goals for Barcelona. 30-10, to 66-34, to 34. shots in possession for Barcelona. All right, um, I guess that's all. You want to talk about anything else? Polino in the La Liga, or you think Xavi is okay and he can move on? Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't look okay. Uh, I'll I'll say Athletic Club are are probably the hottest team in the league right now. So watch Ooh. out for them. Okay, fair enough. I like that. All right, moving on to a city. Ah, wait, 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 and... wait. What do you make yeah. of this? Uh, uh, Girona, like sitting at the top and it's 17 they think it's uh it's one of those cases like Union and berlin yeah like leicester no no it's gonna be like yeah it's probably gonna be more like union berlin i think they'll they'll yeah. still be top four mm-hmm. they'll, they'll still probably be top four but yeah. i think you don't that... see them going all the way no no i think one of i don't think anyone will get signed actually in the winter and i think that uh, Sociedad's too far behind, but I think maybe Athletic Club Bilbao might catch them. I know Girona has... Uh, they, they're still going through a tough run of, of fixtures right now, but I know they have Atletico Madrid coming up soon. So I think if, if they can pull off points against them, then they got a good shot. But they have Betis and Atletico Madrid in their next two matches. That's so going to be a big test. Okay. All right, on to Syria. And actually, I should actually be doing this since it is around Christmas time. Like... <laughs> Christmas time, like. <laughs> love this. Yes. There we go. Oh, we Copyright it. free. All right, Syria. Let us get into it. And I do have a special guest today to help us finish. First place is Inter Milano. Second place is Juventus. Third place is AC Milano. Fourth place is Bologna. Fifth place is Napoli. 18th place is Empoli. 19th place is Verona. 20th place is Talentana. 
Hey, Mario 628, let's get into it, and let me give... Okay, this... I, I, I'm okay for a minute, but that was a minute. Okay, Michael Jackson. Love that. All right. Love that. So, I do have a guest on here to give it. Let me give it to him. He is an Italian expert of Syria, so I'll hand it off to him. Get ready, Paul. <sighs> hey, guys! <laughs> <laughs> hey guys everybody how you doing it's me chris pratt what's up guys? <laughs> i know you miss me a lot it's me chris pratt how you doing guys <laughs> miss me a lot i know i've been watching a lot of series watching all this inter milano juventus and AC Milano's and Bologna. I like the Bologna. Very good. But yes, everybody. Hope you watch my uh, um, Jurassic World. Hope you like Mario because I was Mario. And I'm Italian, of course, because I was in Mario. You know, like the Wahoo Goomba. What the hell is even that? And yeah, Mash Day 16. Let's get into it. I'm Chris Pratt. Genoa, Juventus, one to one. Yikes. Juventus there. Yeah. I'm Chris Pratt. Lace in front of no nay. No, no, no nay. They did a no, no. Lost two to one to Lace. Yeah. Ah, ew, Goomba. What the hell? Napoli and Cagliari. I said that because I'm taking Italian lessons because I'm Mario in the new Super Mario movie. Hey, Napoli two to one. Great job for Naples. Torino and Empoli. One to nil for Torino's great great job for torinos i like casinos and i don't like bowser's Brr. like what the hell is even a bowser milan and monza three to nil for 80 milano great job 80 milano always staying up on the top even though they lost their last game i look at the screen and i follow inter milano because i'm chris pratt boom 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 ah uh, i don't know what that was then udinese and shoshwalo two to two Red card for Udinese because they are uh, not good like the Goombas. What are you? Florentina and Verona. 1 to 0 for Florentina. Great job for them. They are doing so good right now. They, they're they okay. And I'm Chris Pratt. Bologna and Roma. 2 to 0 for Bologna. So yeah, great job, Bologna. Eat your Bologna. Lazio and Inter Milano. 2 to 0. For Inter Milano, always staying on top. They are great. I love Inter Milano because they have great stuff. They're like Super Mario Bros. Like my brother Luigi and the new Super Mario movie. Atalanta and Salernitana 4-1. to one. Atalanta beating Salernitana like I beat Bowser in the Super Mario movies. Hey, watch out for that dinosaur. Jurassic Park. Okay, Chris Pratt, I'm going to go out and I hope you guys liked Chris Pratt. Go see Mario and yeah, I'm yeah, um, Chris Pratt. Lovely appearance. We always love having Chris Pratt on the show. So, um, you can go, go ahead and. What are you giggling about? Is that all <laughs> budget? Huh? <laughs> what did you say? He just that said all it all our budget. No, no, no. Chris Pratt's an average listener to the Golden Girl show and he loves hopping on for. I live with. I live with he's a next with neighbor of mine that flies Ooh. sometimes from the show. So. Oh, okay, okay. Obviously. All right. So, yes. Genoa. And Juventus. Let's just talk about it. So, Albert, oh my god, this guy's name. Goodmanson, that's not that hard. Scoring in the 48th minute, but then let's go travel back in time with Federico Chiesa. Scoring in the 28th minute, a penalty, making it 1 to 1. Not that good for Juventus. They needed a win there, but yeah, still in second place. And yep, um, equal shots actually, but then 57 to 43 possession. Yeah, equal possession is why as well, too, but. Yep, one to one for that game, and then we can talk about Napoli as well too, who are currently in fifth place with um, Victor Osimhen scoring in the 69th minute. Then uh, Leonardo Pavlotti scoring in the 72nd minute for Cagliari. Then Kivja Skilier scoring in the 75th minute for Napoli. The Georgian winger, great job for him. Sir Kvaraj Skilier, Kvaraj, bless you. Yep, 21. <laughs> to nine shots and 67 to 33 for Napoli. Good join for them. And then we can go ahead and talk about a nice little game, which was about, why am I British now? No idea. AT Milano, 
winning 3 to 0 comfortable win. So it was uh, Rendier scoring the third minute, then Jan Carlo Simic scoring the 41st minute, then Noah Okafor. Love that name. I love using Okafor. Great, great for your lips. But yeah, more shots for actually Monza 21 to 17, and more possession for Monza 56 to 44. Yep, but AC Milano did take their chances and score them. I am talking in syllables. Love it. Then that's what happened. That's what happens when you play Thomas Pobega at center back. Yeah, for AC Milano. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're right. He did. Yes, he was actually yes, Mr. Thomas Pobega. I know everything about him. He's an Italian professional footballer. Plays as a midfielder for Serie A club and the national team. He's a um, good friend of uh, Chris Pratt. Yes, yes, yes. So he was born on 15th of July 1999 as an Italian professional footballer. Of course, I know this. He was born in the birthplace of Trieste. Oh, beautiful place. He is six foot two, very tall, very old girls like him, like that. He's 24 years old, and his birth, he's his, his star sign is an Aquarius. Everybody want to know anything else about Thomas Pogba? Go ahead. No. All right. So we will talk about <laughs> Inter Milano versus Lazio. Two to nil for Inter Milano. And Latoro Martinez scoring the 40th minute. Great job for him. Great striker. Then Marcus Turam scoring the 66th minute. And a red card for Manuel Lazzari in the 86th minute. So, yep. Love it. Very love it. Love it all the way. And, yep. Um, Paulinho, do you want to talk about any of the games in Serie A? This past weekend, um, well, I think for Torino, it's exciting that Zapata is finally coming into form. That's going to be huge for them, I think. And then you think he's going to get a move away? No, no, he only just signed from Atalanta. He's old now. Really? He's he's doing charity work for them. Oh, yeah. I know someone who does charity work. Um, <clears throat> you? No, 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 Dimitri. Yeah. Do you have any pies for the charity anytime coming soon? Um, maybe you should, like you should get a uh, Duvan a celebratory pie. Oh, honestly, yeah. What kind oh. of pie would that be, Dimitri? You want to answer this question with the pies? I know you're the pie expert, so I I want to hear him. I think he, he might be working on a pie right now, so I, I'm gonna just not gonna bother him unless he wants to jump in. So we'll move on now to the Bundesliga. Jawohl. So Bundesliga. First place is in the Bayern. Leverkusen is still on top. Oh, yep. Second place is Bayern München. And third place is Stuttgart. Fourth place is Leipzig. Fifth place is indeed Dortmund. Sixth place is Eintracht Frankfurt. Sixth place is Mainz. Seventeen is Kuhn. Eighteen place is Darmstadt. Actually, sixteen. Let's get into it. So, Werder Bremen and RB Leipzig. Eins zu eins. One to one. Yes, not so good for RB Leipzig. I might say so myself. Dortmund and Mainz, 1 to 1, 1 to 1, and also good for Dortmund as well too, but Mainz still keeping up the things, they like to party party, Hoffenheim, Darmstadt, 3 to 3, that's to die, yep, uh, great game here if you actually want to go watch some highlights, Union Berlin and Kuhn, 2 to 0 for Union, Union Berlin, sorry I had to say it, so, Eintracht Frankfurt and Monuncia Gladbach, 3 to 1, 1, 2 to 1 for Eintracht Frankfurt beating him today, or actually Wednesday. Uh, Bayern München Gladbach getting a red card as well, too. Great job for Frankfurt. Heidenheim in Freiburg, 3 to 2. Great game for Heidenheim as well, too, for the newly promoted Bundesliga 2 team. Bundesliga 2. Stuttgart in Eisberg, 3 to 0. Easy win for Stuttgart. Great job keeping up their form as well, too. Then Bayern Leverkusen in the Bochum, 4 to 0, a battering. In Bayern for Bayern Leverkusen against Bochum. Then Wolfsburg and Bayern. 2 to 1 for Bayern in Wolfsburg. So, yep, easy win. For, I mean, I wouldn't say easy win, but yeah, Hurricane. Hurricane scoring more for Bayern. 21 goals for him in the Bundesliga in just 15 games. So, yep, lovely that. And um, anybody want to talk about any Bundesliga here? Well, for our Dortmund fan, um, Dortmund's only won one in the last eight, and their defense has been awful recently. What do you got to say about that? Solomon, 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 Solomon. No, no, I think we were just talking about that one. They they 
they have great form when it comes to the Champions League, but they really struggle like against the last time they lost, I think against the uh, how did they equalize against uh, RB Leipzig? Mm-hmm. And no, then they lost. This, yeah. <laughs> so this time but well, they they played pretty good even though they didn't have to and the Champions League they were pretty like I mean but uh, yeah the, that is true they've been struggling in the Bundesliga for some odd reason maybe it's the style of play the the for the league is different or like the pace is different but yeah they they've been uh, struggling and they don't have that bad of a defendant defenders either like I don't know what the cause of this year, and they're sitting at fifth place as of right now. But I didn't actually watch this one, or like not even the highlight. But in general, I do know. I just keep tabs like uh, whenever they play, I see the scores and stuff. But they do uh, struggle in the Bundesliga for some reason. For I, yeah, I think it has to do with the pace of the game, and then I guess their priority is also. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it could be uh, one of those, but yeah, I do. Yeah, maybe they they have the sixth worst defense in the Bundesliga. Jesus, uh, really? Yeah, and they don't even have that. But like, I I, th- I think maybe they don't have protection in front of their defense, but also they had that to formation as well. Yeah, ho- hopefully, Ostchen can uh, step in and. Mm-hmm. Kind of do some of the work that John was supposed to do. Yeah, most likely. I think, yeah, but it's most likely due to like, I think they mainly. I don't know. I could be wrong with this one, but I think they mainly. Uh, they, I think they like to play with in the back rather than four, or, or you know, like having a winger that go back and forth. Yeah, so I mean, that could be one one of the reasons. But yeah, hopefully. Okay. Well. I'll just go over some games with the past. So, uh, Werder Bremen and Leipzig. So, uh, Luis Openda scoring in the 47th minute. This is a weird uh, picture of um, this guy from Werder Bremen. He looks like he wants to kill Jobby Sims. But yeah, then Judson uh, Nemanja scoring in the 75th minute. And yeah, equal his stats kind of. So, can't really say much about this one. Then we can go on to the second game of the league so is Mainz and Dortmund in Borussia so Julian Brandt scoring in the 29th minute then Shep van den Berg scoring in the 43rd minute definitely more stats for Dortmund 22 to 11 66 to 34 shots and possession so, yep Dortmund definitely more positive and then another game we can talk about is indeed Union Berlin the struggling team in Bundesliga right now finally winning a game so Benedict Hollenbach, and then Solomon. Do you happen to know this guy who scored for Union Berlin? 78th minute, David Datro Fofana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chelsea player? Yeah, yeah. Chelsea yeah. player, yeah. They, re- yeah, they recently won. actually recalled somebody from somewhere. I don't know. Was it Santos or something? They yeah, called I think so. The... Yeah. But yeah, uh, it's good to see. Uh... Yeah. Getting some goals. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, then we can talk about Antrag Pampa and Bayern Munchen Gladbach. That's your um, team. Yes, sir. Then um, Maximilian Wolba scoring in the 27th minute for Borussia. Bayern Munchen Gladbach. This name. Then <laughs> Ariola Buta scoring in the 92nd minute for Antrag Pampa. Then in the 97th minute of extra time, Robin Koch. Scoring in the 97th minute and yep, making a 2 to 1 for either of our crazy scenes in uh, Frankfurt. Ah, oh, love that. Then Maximilian Wolba scoring. I mean, getting a red card in the 88th minute. The English. So yeah, definitely uh, Frankfurt had more possession and shots 14 63 compared to 7 37. So yep, that was that. And then we, of course we have to talk about Stuttgart because they're rolling right now. So Denise uh, Dav scoring in the 18th minute. Then Suma Warsi scoring in the 46th minute. Then Chris Ulrich scoring in the 69th minute. Pretty up dominant for them. 17 and 66, 6 to 34 shots in possession for Stuttgart. Then, of course, we have to talk about the Bayern München. And, yep, uh, Jamal Musiala scoring in the 33rd minute. Then Maximilian Arnold in the 46th minute. 
Then Hurricane, Harry Kane, scoring the 43rd minutes, making the 21st goal in his Bundesliga career. So, 20 to 5 and 61 39 4. shots in possession. So, yep, a dominant game for Bayern. We can now move on to League Moon. And I know we all want to watch. I actually did watch the League Moon match this past weekend. And yeah, I I, don't, I was just running on the treadmill. I was like, I saw it on. I was like, hey, why not? So, um, honestly, do we even have to talk about this? We can just talk about who do we think is going to win the League Moon this year? Should we all say it on 3 2 1? I think so. 3 2 1. PSG. PSG. Wow. 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 I need an Owen Wilson wow, but I until then I can just do this. Bow! Not wow, it's dow. Yeah. Love that. Um now moving on to Saudi Pro League. Um MLS is already done. But Saudi Pro League, so Al Hilal, first place, Al Nasar, Cristiano Ronaldo, Sui in second place, Al Ali Saudi, third place, and then Al Kahun is fourth place and that's Etihad with Benzema and Kante fifth place and that's all I can be really asked to talk about that league so now we actually do have a great time that we're going to talk about actually first Whoa. what about Al Shabab you're right <laughs> Al Bob I love Bob the Builder all right Champions League let's talk about that um it happened it's all done the teams that are going to play now and we'll do a, probably a, do a prediction before this um, whole thing starts again. And we'll do like a prediction of who we think is going to go through what. And like we did last year. First. Porto versus Arsenal. Napoli versus Barcelona. Paris Saint-Germain versus Real Sociedad. Inter Milano versus Atletico Madrid. Oh my god, this is great. PSV and Dortmund. Lazio and Bayern München. Uh, PSV... Uh, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, for sure. And Manchester City, RB Leipzig, and Real Madrid. So, I'm just going to ask, I guess, our guests right now. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know if I want to ask anything right. I'll just say, who do you think looks, the, I'm not going to say who's going to win. Who do you think looks the strongest coming into this Champions League draw, round of 16? And I'll ask first. Sullivan, who do you think looks the strongest? Oh my god, look what City are facing. I can't believe it. This is unbelievable. I don't know how they're going to pass. I don't know how they're going to... Oof. This is going to be... Uh, tough? That's going to be a tough one. Oh yeah. You're crying. Man. You're shaking. Picking oh my roots. god. Yeah, okay. Shaking who do, my who do you think? Who do you think the strongest team coming into this? Oh yeah, de- definitely. Um, it's gonna be City for sure. Okay, fair enough. Like that. I don't right. think. Did they lose? I don't think they lost the game in the Champions League. Um, I don't think. Did I don't they? Know, they equalized, I think. Maybe, but, yeah, they did equalize, but I don't yeah, think they lost. But one good game is gonna be the Inter Milan versus um, yeah Atletico. Yeah, that's gonna definitely. be a good one. But other than that, everybody else. Even PSG, who finished second place, got. Hmm. Oh my! Hate to play. Wow. Talk. Okay. Good life. And right. second one would be like Real Madrid and uh, Leipzig. That's gonna okay. be an interesting game as well. Yeah. Very true. Okay, I'll ask um, uh, Emilio. Who do you think is the strongest team coming into this round of sixteen? Maybe Manchester United. Oh. Wow. Emilio, come on, don't be shy. You can talk. About oh, so- sorry, sorry, I was muted. Uh, <laughs> uh, like I, uh, first off, you're funny, Thank Andrew. You. I see how it is. Uh, I'm, and I'm thinking, uh, Real Madrid. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, honestly, fair enough. And I hope Porto wins. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Hey, me too. Um, okay. Then I'll go ahead and ask Dimitri. Dimitri, who do you think looks the strongest coming into this Champions League draw? I know Napoli. there's a lot. Napoli. Hey, shout out Napoli. Shout out Napoli. Humsik's going to get a hat trick every game. Napoli. Napoli yes. and PSV. 
Yeah. All right, PSV, love that. All right, then, Paulinho, who do you think looks the strongest coming into this Champions League? Are you going to be favoritism, or are you going to... What are you going to say? Well, actual, the, the number one team, I think, coming, that's going to be in February, okay. I think yeah. by February, Bayern will be the best. Oh. But I, I think for a surprise, I think I think Sociedad's going to be a lot better than people think. Really? I think PSG will still get through, but I, I think people are going to be surprised. I haven't really followed, they, been following. They won Real the Sociedad. group over Inter. What? I haven't been really watching Real Sociedad, to be honest. They haven't been that good in the league, but in the Champions League, they've been really good, and they were better than Inter in both the games. Oh, okay. So it's basically like a Dortmund with Bundesliga. Yeah, and I mean they won the group over Inter, so that's that says a lot. Yeah, definitely. Oh wow. Okay, well yeah, that's gonna be interesting, and I guess we can talk about till that. And the same thing with Europa League too. So Yeah. Okay, love that. Alright, well everybody, actually, we're gonna get into another fun time right now, and everybody knows what time it is. It's summertime. Brought to you by High School Musical. Get in the game with <gasps> Alright. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Oh, I was thinking Will Smith's summertime, but all right. No, no, no. Yeah, that's hot. <laughs> all right, so indeed, everybody, it is the, the Golden Goal Show football quiz. So let me go ahead and explain the rules for my AI assistant. She is very great. Welcome, everyone, everybody, and everything to the Golden Goal Show football quiz. Our guests today will have 10 seconds to answer each of the 10 football-related multiple-choice questions. Woo wow woo! Whoever has the most answers correct by the end of the quiz wins a huge prize. Wow. Maybe. Maybe not. I dunno. I don't work here. Anyways, good luck, and may the odds be ever in your favor. So that's basically the quiz. Anybody have any questions about the quiz or anything quiz about the questions? Huh? What do you mean, huh? You've done this before. You're nincom. Yeah, yeah, but I think you just switched the, 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 you know what? Never mind. Don't worry about it. So, yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, Dimitri. Oh. So, can you send me the answers again so I can win? Yeah, of course. Because I think the answers <laughs> you sent me were like for the previous week again. Mm hmm. So you just resend them, them, please. Did you get them? Yep, yep. Okay, sweet. All right. So question, um, Paulinho, do you know how this it goes, basically? Yeah. Okay, sweet. All right. First question. By the way, this is about 2018 World Cup final. Or 2018 World Cup, my bad. First question. During the 2018 FIFA World Cup final, which player was unfortunate to score an own goal by headbutting, heading, but later made up for it when he scored a goal when opposing goalkeeper failed to dribble around him during an awkward back pass. Was it Brozovic, Modric, Perisic, or Mandzukic? You have 10 seconds. I feel like Mandzukic. I feel like it's Modric. Alright, you have 5 seconds. Brozovic, Modric, Perisic, Mandzukic. What are you saying, Solomon? Paul? Uh, Mandzukic, too? I don't know. I don't feel confident. It was Mandzukic. All right. Well, wait, what did you say, um, Mr. Emilio? Mm -hmm. I, it, what, what, what did I say? What, what, something. <laughs> you say Mandzukic, Pelosic, Modric, or... The other guy that that's not even correct. You know, it's gonna be the other guy that isn't that isn't correct. Just put me, just saying, just just get me out of here. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, no, I I literally forgot what I said. Okay, is it Mandzukic, Perisic, or Modric or Bagabogujic? Mandzukic. Okay, well, um, Dimitri did say Modric, and honestly, I'm very proud of him. Correct. Disappointed. But Paul, Emilio, Solomon, hey, don't cry. You got it right. Wow. Very cool. So wow. But actually, sh uh, should I message you the answer too? 
love that. So yeah, um, good job. It is one to one to one to one to zero. Oh, wait, Dimitri, I sent you the answers. What the hell is even this? <laughs> okay, fine. All right, now question number two: Which goalkeeper won the Golden Glove Award in 2018? Pickford, Kotwa, Doris, or Subasic? You have ten seconds. Pickford, Kotwa, Doris. Uh, yeah, five seconds. Pickford. Yep. Everybody else? Uh, the Belgian. Uh, Courtois. Yeah, Courtois? Okay. Paul? Yeah, Courtois. Courtois. I messaged you. Oh, you messaged me, actually. Okay. You are indeed correct. Bing, bing, bing. Uh, why did I? I was just too lazy to say something else. All right, yep, you got that correct. It is now, Emilio, you lost that one. How do you feel? Yeah, story of my life. Solomon, how do you feel? You said Prickford. Oh, no, no. Prickford? That sounds kind of Prickford. befitting him, though. <laughs> that's a, that's an easy name. For... Mm -hmm. Wait, did you say Prickford or did, did Emilio say No, I said... The, no, I said Prickford. The Belgian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then, oh, I yeah, said, this is uh, Emilio, Courtois. hold this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is now three to, no, what the hell? Two to two, two to one to zero. There we go. Love that. Math. All right, number three. <laughs> Which country's team got the most yellow cards during 15, actually? During the group and knockout stages of the World Cup? Was it Croatia, Belgium, England, or France? You have 10 seconds. Madrid. What, what, what year? 2018. Oh, 2018. Oh. I think Good. the answer is Modric. Five seconds. What was the option one more time? I'm sorry. Croatia, Belgium, England, France. Modric. Uh, France. Okay. Oh. I want to say it's England. Okay. Mm. I'll say England, but I don't know this one. Okay. Modric. All right. Well, <laughs> the correct answer, um, Paul. Proud of you, Emilio. Even more prouder. And Solomon. Finally, you got something. But then, the goat himself, Dimitri, got it right. So yeah. What? It was indeed Croatia with 15 yellow cards. Love that. And yeah, it is now a three, to three to two to two. I. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All right. The FIFA World Cup 2018. This is question number four. Uh, was the first to use BAR, which resulted in a penalty in the final match? What do the letter VAR stand for? Uh, oh, should we just skip this question? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait. Is, it video, is it video activity recording, video aid registration, Video alert recognition or video assistant referee. You have ten seconds to whip video it. assistant. Video referee. assistant referee. That's a dead. That's a give. I'm not second. Paul, what do you think, Dimitri? Mm hmm. Oh, video assistant referee. Yeah. Dimitri, what do you want to say? You want to say Modric again? I'm gonna go with um. Benzema. All right. Well, everybody got it correct, except everybody. Good job. Mm -hmm. So it is indeed the video assistant referee. What a shocker. Everybody got that right. So the correct answer is now, um, if I my math is correct, it is four to four to three to three because Dimitri gets rights. All right. Question number five. During the 2018 World Cup final, members of which group stormed the football pitch dressed as police officers? Oh, I didn't even know this. Oh, my God. I, can I say this word? I don't know if I can say this word. Was it Rote Zora? Pussycat Riot. I'm not going to. Yep. Bikini Kill or Femen? You have 10 seconds. <laughs> Rote Zora. Oh. Pussycats? I think it was Pussycats. 
I think so. What was the question the again? During the 2018 FIFA World Cup final, remember which group stormed the football pitch dressed as police officers? It wasn't Pussy Riots. Um, Love that. Thank you. Because they, they were performing in church, um, and then they got arrested. Okay. For that. Uh, because they're a Russian group, I think I'm going to say, yeah. Who? Uh, a, option A. Okay. I'll go, I'll go with the pussy one, too, since... Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Said no. <laughs> All right. I don't remember them doing okay. that. They, they weren't even really a band. They were just activists. Yeah. Wait, so who are you I, 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 I think they're who rock are, stars. Who are you going for? No, no. They're not. Uh, 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 pussies. <laughs> God damn it, guys! <laughs> I'm not gonna get monetized. I'll say it too for the sake of it, but I'm pretty sure it's not them. <laughs> Go ahead. Say yeah, it. I'll say pussy rides, but it's not them. It's 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 anatomically correct, so everybody got right. Indeed, the pussy cat dolls did win. All right, question. Hold on, really? Yeah. I I never. Remember that, but well, get there. They're a band based in uh, in Moscow. He knows that. No, they were. They were interesting oh, I guess folks. Netherlands. They were. Yeah. No, they. Okay, moving on. One of them. Whatever. Oh. <laughs> Question number six. It's it's not 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 not, not whatever. It's okay. <laughs> Don't cry. Um. I don't even know the score right now, honestly. I'm still focused on Pussycat Dolls. Um, I know that... Who's... What's... What? Who's winning? Who's... What's what? What's happening? Uh... <laughs> uh... No, I don't even know. Great. Is question number is... Everyone wins. Five. We'll, we'll just... How about we just... It's question number six. Everybody's winning. How many matches were played during the group... In the knockout stages in 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. 64, 48, 80, or 32? 10 seconds. 64, 48, 80, 32. How many 69. Okay. No, 64. 64. All right. 64. Everybody want to say 64? Yeah. Or 48 or 80? Indeed, it was 64. Everybody, good job. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right. I remember for that for that one, I remember I stayed up and watched every single game for that World Cup. Same, same. Oh, you too? Yeah. You're not special. That's the only reason why I know. Oh, bro, yeah, I, I had to stay up two in the morning just so yeah. I can watch some same. of those games. And I ended up dead tired. Oh, the two in the morning. morning. Yeah, dude. He lives in California. Oh yeah, time time here is not friendly to me. Nope. Listen. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Number seven. The FIFA final of the 2018 FIFA World Cup final was played in which city? Samara, Moscow, Saint Petersburg, or your Dallas Stars? All right. What is it? <laughs> Ten seconds. Sorry. Samara, Moscow, Saint Petersburg, or Sochi. You have 10 seconds. Moscow. Okay. Uh, St. Petersburg. Okay. It's going to be wrong. Okay. Well, okay. Hmm? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, Moscow. <laughs> okay. Um, Dimitri, what are you going to say? Final of the World Cup. Moscow. Okay. I want to say Kazan, but it wasn't there. So. Moscow. Well, St. Petersburg. Um, who said St. Petersburg? I did. Why? Uh, that sounded correct. Honestly? Wow, 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 wow. That's incorrect. <laughs> yeah. But everybody else. Correct. It is indeed Moscow. Surprise, surprise. It was in the... Yeah, good job. Okay, well, everybody's winning except Salman. Salman, what do you have to say about yourself? I'm going to catch up. Give me a motivational speech right now. Come on. 
<laughs> put the music for you and everything. Well, well, that's that's supposed to be for me? No. Yeah. That's what all podcast hosts do. Wow, yeah. look at that. Look at that. Nothing, that's what got nothing. podcast hosts do for their co host. Look at that. Great. Yeah, I just uh just want to take up this um this moment to thank uh my family. This isn't an Oscar speech. You're trying to come on, man. You're <laughs> trying to motivate. Let me, have, let me have my moment over here. Don't. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I know it took a lot of time. I had to watch the 2018 World Cup. Waking up at nine. Waking up at you know two in the morning. Ungodly hours, but it paid off. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's huge. Uh, it means a lot to me. I know wow. it's just a quiz, but you know what I mean. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. I'd like that one. All right, on to the next question. During the group and knockout stages of the 2018 FIFA World Cup, which country's team scored the most goals? 14. Was it Croatia, England, Belgium, or France? You have 10 seconds. Croatia, Belgium, France. Belgium. Uh, France. Okay, everybody else? Uh, France. Okay. Dimitri? We lost a great one. Dimitri, are you there? The answer is Panini. Oh, I was muted. I, uh, uh, Panini. Okay, whoa! Nice. Good answer. <laughs> so... Who did say France? Uh, I did. Who else said France? Panini. Who else said Panini? I did. Okay. Who said Belgium? I did. I did. (laughs) 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 Who else said Belgium? I did say Belgium. Nice. All right. Paul, did you say Belgium? No. Dimitri, what'd you say? Belgium. Good job. Yeah, <laughs> so proud of you. <laughs> All right. Question number 10. This is the last one. God forbid. During the 2018 FIFA World Cup final, which player was unfortunate to score? An... Where did he do this? Get out of here, Manzoukas. <laughs> Who was the manager of Belgium's national team at the 2018 FIFA World Cup? Didier Deschamps, Georges Likens, Roberto Martinez, Mark Will Watts. You have 10 seconds. Roberto Martinez. Okay, okay. Before I even press the button. Will Watts. Roberto. 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 Isn't it? it? Like his... uh, His daddy. His coaching staff was uh, (laughs) Terry Henry. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. Everybody, did you get your answers in? Was he still? No. He's like under under 21. He's He's the coach. Okay, well, um, is everybody going to say Roberto Martinez, or you want to go for someone else? Well, I, I, I said the 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 uh, a Mama Wiwa guy. That's Borat. Wait, yeah, did you hear Deschamps, Georges Likens, Roberto Martinez, or Mark Wilmots? Oh, Wilmots. There you go. That's a guy. Well, 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 we well. <laughs> well, Mark. Well, 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 well. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> well, the correct answer is indeed Mark. Well, we That's not. It's not. It's no. But Roberto Martinez is correct, which makes the winner of this show. I have no idea. That was me. What? Damn! No. Who won that? What do I do to win this game, man? That that was the power of friendship. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> do we get our participation trophy? Just when you think he's done everything, he comes up with something even more special. I think we have to save Jumanji. <laughs> I can uh, get pies for everyone, special deliver and all. Can we get a parting message from Chris Pratt? 
<laughs> Actually, I'll let Chris Pratt do the memes of the week because he deserves it. But yes, congratulations to everybody for winning this Golden Goal show. I couldn't be asked to know who won that one, so good job. Um, Good job, just everybody. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get into the Football Memes of the Week last segment of the show. And Chris Pratt will do it. Here, Chris Pratt, take this because everybody wants you. And you can also watch Chris Pratt in the new movie Garfield because that's who he's going to be. Hey, that's right. I'm Meowtastic in Garfield. That's me, Chris Pratt. Watch out for the dinosaur. I'm Mario Bowser. <laughs> so, everybody, welcome to Football Means of the Week brought to you by Rival Banters. We love this meme page. And yes, this is Mr. Elway, Mr. Ronnie Foden. He's holding a popsicle, as happy as ever, and his head is big. But yes, everybody, we love him. Why will we? Well, and whatever Chris Pratt says. Oh, I can't keep up with his voice. He's giving me a sore throat. So first meme is, of course, about United. And match. I'm going to give up the Chris Pratt. I can't even mind the voice hurts. But yeah. Um, yeah, first game. First meme is about United. And yes, they did a fan bust that they won that game. So no way United fans are celebrating a draw. So Manchester United fell off so badly. They celebrated their win or tie over Liverpool with a little party bus. That's crazy. And someone put on Twitter on the side of the bus saying, didn't lose the 7-0 to zero this time. So, great job, United. You, you, you did, Emilio. Proud of you, mate. All things. The most we're going to get out of it. Hey, love that. <laughs> were you at the parade? No. Oh, that's safe. I don't want oh, protection. I wish I was. Um, okay. On to the next topic, which is indeed about... Um, oh, oh, this is weird. So, Arsenal, um, <laughs> film updates, Leonardo DiCaprio says he does not follow football. And he said this in an interview, what is Arsenal? Mesut Osniel commented back on this, saying Arsenal Football Club is older than 25 years old. So why, was, why should he know? <laughs> I don't know if anybody gets this joke, but he only goes for a girl. Yeah. 25 years old so Ozil is an absolute savage oh my god I love that love that so much shout out Ozil alright Mr. Elway cute little person um, let us see <laughs> the next meme is indeed about Meshi Pessi so someone what? T- no way they released an Ange Postacoglu favorite crisps so it's a picture of Messi with a mate which is indeed like an Argentinian type of tea Herbal tea, and it says mate on it. And yes, Ange Costacoglu is indeed the Tottenham coach, and he is indeed Australian. So, shrimps on a bye mate, and yes. call me a Tasmanian devil. So, yeah, crazy. Good job, Messi. Getting uh, your old lace favor. You know, you made it when you got your old lace favor. Snoop Dogg. I'm is. scared to know what it tastes like. It tastes like absolute. Yeah, it's fun. yeah. yeah. That's all I gotta say. All right. Well, everybody, that was indeed the golden goal show that was this episode and all i gotta say is michael jackson save me that's not what i want to say but i do want to say everybody thank you so much for watching this episode and wish you all a merry christmas happy new year and yep safe times with your family and just there's also an elf one too how does this sound like michael jackson um elf hello is it working Uh, I don't like that. That sounds depressing. Uh, yeah, main thing. All right. Well, yep. Like I said, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Solomon, thank you for joining us always. Chelsea's fun, uh, Bryce. Uh, no problem, mate. No problem. Of course, of course. Dan Emilio, thanks for being on as well, too. Thank you for here. Uh, always live. It's always nice to be on the show again. Love that. Then Dimitri, thank you for being on. Shout out your pies, man. Yep. Yeah. Then, of course, Paul, thank you for being on as well, too. Love to have you on and hope to have you on again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Of course. Hey, everybody, thank you for watching the show. Like, subscribe, and share. Because I'll share again. How else are you going to know Messi does not have a Lays brand? Because everybody needs to have the Lays brand. In. Yes. Point. Give us yes. some money. Yes. I don't know what. And KSI, be on the show, damn it. Yep. Um, bang, sponsor us, please. No, I don't want Bing. All right, well, everybody, as we say in three, two, one, repeat after me. One, one, 
love, love football. 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 One love Fine. football. Thank you guys for watching and okay, bye. Later. <laughs> oh.